Hi, this is Bob. I have a new uh, receiver here that I acquired. Bought it on eBay. It was uh, quite inexpensive. Did not work. It was sold as a parts unit. And this is a Heathkit AR3. And uh, I just took it out of the case. I have uh, installed on it these big old big knobs that have a lot of uh, I would say a lot of, you, you can grab a hold of them and you can turn them much easier than the little knobs. And the reason for that is that these controls are so thick, and the, the, the lubrication is so thick in there that uh, they're difficult to turn. So uh, using my, uh, my syringe, which I have right back here, I have uh, put a tiny bit of oil on the shafts, each one, in there, in there, in there, on the band switch, in there, <laughs> each one of these controls, and then I work them back and forth, back and forth, until they loosen up. And you can you can restore those controls that way. I also take the uh, syringe. And let me turn this over. There we go. I also take this syringe. I've got the plastic tip on the syringe there for protection, but I also take the syringe and I stick it down in that little slot there on the volume controls, and I put a tiny bit of uh, oil in each one of the controls. The oil I'm using is 10W30 synthetic motor oil. I want the synthetic oil because the synthetic oil will last a lot longer. And then with the bigger knobs on you can turn them easier. So I just take a couple of old knobs, big ones, so I can do like that and work them and work them and work them. And you reach a point where they get loose. Now this one here I've already done and as you, as you can see, I can turn that with my fingers now. I could not turn that control at all before. And I put that really big knob on there and worked it back and forth. Now, this receiver, uh, after I started cleaning the controls, I uh, plugged it in and turned it on. Normally, I put these into a, connect them to a Variac, bring the voltage up very slowly, and in order to preserve the filter capacitors. But on this one, the eBay listing said that they had plugged it in and that it lit up. And so uh, I decided since they'd plugged it in and just turned it on, that I would do the same. Because if there was any damage done, it had already been done. So when you get a receiver like this, the best thing is to put it on a Variac variable AC supply and bring the voltage up slowly and that that causes your filter capacitors to reform and when you do that then they, they may just survive this capacitor here seems to be uh, seems to have survived now this receiver is connected there we go and you will notice when it warms up that there's uh, there's hum in it there I don't plan to, uh, there it is, now that may be the filter capacitor or it may be also ground connections. They use the chassis in these, and, and most teeth kits, they use the chassis as ground. and. Uh, connections to those grounds is made if you can see right down in here well, let's see if I can get get in there so I can show you right down there is a ground lug there's a whole lot of those inside the radio there's the ground lug and inside there's a bunch of them under the chassis so I haven't done anything to this yet except, pardon my camera moving around, I haven't done anything in this 
on this radio except lubricate the controls. The cabinet I have sitting over here and it's glued it had broken loose here on both sides this one is already glued and dried and this one I just glued and it's been clamped and is is drying now I used E6000 glue for that I think I would prefer to use a um, a good wood glue like tight bond or maybe Gorilla Glue for the cabinet but I had the E6000 and E6000 works pretty good so I used it for that so uh, <clears throat> this cabinet was starting to fall apart so we got that taken care of <coughs> excuse me and that's coming along now getting back to this buzz and the uh, and the ground connections here you see one here there's another one right there and the ground connections on the tube sockets they use these two and they should be grounded through through these screws that mount the tube sockets but you find as I did working on these a lot that they don't always have a good ground through those so what I do with these is I will take some hookup wire. I've got a roll of uh, hookup wire here that came from Radio Shack, uh, number 20, I believe it is, or 22. Anyhow, I'm going to go from one ground lug to another ground lug to a tube socket to another ground lug <laughs> to another tube socket. Uh, until I have connected all the grounding points together and the reason for that is that these chassis when they get this old and the hardware when it gets this old the grounds loosen up or have a tiny bit of corrosion under them and you get that buzzing so I'm going to first connect all of those ground connections together and then see what happens here's a here's a ground connection right there on that little phono connector and here's a tube socket here with ground connections so I've got quite a bit of work cut out here to put all those wires in and create a how should I put it a backup ground system a redundant ground system uh, separate actually of the chassis but it will be connected to the chassis at several points another thing is to take the hardware apart scrape it clean underneath and I put a little bit of silicon grease on there not much just a teeny bit and the silicon grease I I consider it to be a connection enhancer it enhances the ground connection and it prevents future corrosion and also when you take it apart and scrape it you're cleaning the metal which makes a better ground connection so that's important to do that these are where the where the uh, variable capacitor is grounded right here and I'm going to treat those two as well so that will be the first thing will be all the ground wires in here I'll put new grounds in <coughs> from one point to another until I get them all in there and that'll be quite a bit of work but uh, that's what I'm starting out with here also there's a cleaning of the uh, tubes I'll just clean those with a little bit of soap and water and uh, put them back in and also then cleaning of the chassis I don't think I'm going to take this one and wash it in the uh, in the little sink like I have done with the others this is quite clean under here and I think I'm going to just use some q-tips and some q-tips and some alcohol and maybe a little soap and water and just clean on the outside uh, around on the chassis I don't think I'll need to do any more than that and I'm going to put a new cord on this cord is very very stiff when we have a, an appliance here that we're going to throw out whatever it may be I usually cut the cord off and this is one of those so I picked this up laying over here in a box of cords that I have saved over the years and I'm going to put that on the radio because this cord is very very stiff and cracked in places even though it does it does still work 
but uh, I wouldn't want to use it for very long, just for a, a quick test. So uh, that's it, guys. This is the first installment of the uh, a Heathkit AR3 restoration. And I wanted to mention, too, that I my very first Heathkit was an AR3 Heathkit that I got in 1957. I was 15 years old and uh, put it together, uh, very first kit. I never did get it working properly. And uh, this one here, uh, of course, will be when I get done with it. So that's it, guys. Uh, like I say, this is the first installment on this. 73s and good DX.